Hello world and welcome back to my chaos. Today we're finishing off the last part of my continuation of the Parents' Day cards for 2021. And much like last month's Mother's Day video, I'll be taking you through the entire process. And unlike last month's Mother's Day video, I've cut this up into three smaller segments. Last time we finally got to the carving part of this print and to see how that went, check out the card. But today we're going to be focusing completely on the printing process. Well, the printing and the drying and the... This is Mind Dabble. I'm Dee. Let's dabble. So now the block has been carved and cleaned. Cleaned. At least as much as possible. So now it's time to prepare for the printing. And before anything, I need paper. At some point I bought this 120 GSM drawing paper and it's really nice to work on so I'm using that. I need A5 and from an A3 paper, that's easy peasy right? I fold them once, rip, fold them twice and rip and thus we have four A5 pieces of paper with two, two deckled edges. I usually just make as many as I can be bothered to because I can find an a use for the excess at some point. Should be easy enough. Then I need some ink. I have this German brand. It was cheap from someone called AMI. And it's water-based, so it's easy to clean and easy to use. Well, kind of easy to use. It's, it's easy to clean. And then I need a brayer. I have this cheap one that I bought from Stelling, which is the big chain artist supply brand in Denmark. It was cheap. And it's fairly soft, so it works. It rolls. Then I need my Baron, and it's the 3-in-1 SD tool, which I've already talked about in excess, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's a fine enough Baron. Sometimes, however, I do go to the kitchen to grab one of the wooden spoons and just use that. And then we need a surface to roll out the ink. And I've been using a bunch of different items. I once took a plastic pocket and put some backing board into it and used that for rolling. And ugh, it kind of worked, but it was also really messy. Then I bought a cheap plastic tray that was terrible, a complete waste of money. And I think I'm just going to be using it as a paint palette instead. So general warning, do not use plastic. It's fine if you don't have access to anything else, but as soon as possible, you should really get a hold of a glass pane, or as I'm using here, because the glass pane I found is way too big to be on my table. It's huge. So instead, I'm just using this piece of mirror. Someone's discarded it. I took it, cleaned it up. It works wonders. As soon as possible, find some glass or a mirror. It's made quite a difference. When you put a strip of ink onto the paint, you roll it out. <laughs> First in, uh, in one direction and then in the other direction. You have to go kind of crisscross to make sure that the entire brayer is completely evenly coated. So, when you feel like you have a complete coverage on your brayer, you go to the block. And again, you really want to roll in different directions because the ink you have on the roller goes down onto the plate and then you make holes in the layer on your brayer consistent with the design. It makes sense in my head. I hope you understood what I said. Anyway, as I usually say, the first pull, to me at least, is never any good. I basically always use it just to prime the block. And sometimes it can be two first pulls. That's only sometimes. I think this is the first time I've experienced it. So anyway, eh, don't count on the first pull, is what I'm trying to say. And we're finally on to the printing. What's with all these hairs? So this is one of the more exciting parts of the whole process because you finally get to see the fruit of your labor of this very long process. <laughs> 
it's always very exciting and sometimes also very satisfying, but not every time. So I have a couple of tips for inking the plate and for your prints. And one of those is basically just don't overdo it. When you're inking the plate, you want to build up the amount of ink on the plate very slowly. There is a very high risk of flooding all the fine details of your design. And okay, you may not start crying, but you're gonna be very sad. It's a tip that I know of, and it is a tip that I'm trying to practice, but I still make plenty of mistakes in that department. <sighs> Another thing is you really have to be patient. Again, I'm practicing, I'm trying to practice this tip. Sometimes it just doesn't work because I tend to end up being very busy when I'm doing these. Wonder why. Earlier in the year, I made a print. I actually have it here. I made a print for the International Hugging Day. This is the best one out of all of the ones I printed. And it's bad, but I was also rushing. The difference between a bunch of good prints and a bunch of bad prints can just be you rushing through the prints. This is like a smoker telling the children not to smoke, isn't it? Anyway, the last thing. When you're finished pressing your paper onto your block, you don't have to pull it entirely. You're allowed to just take a little sneak peek and see if you've been everywhere where you want to be. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> you don't even have to be that careful if you're just even a little bit careful. When you drop down the print again onto the plate, it's not going to move. It's not going to be the end of the world if the print shifts. You're allowed to take a sneak peek. Please don't use a hairdryer. You risk blowing all your prints away. You can't really just bundle them together for them to dry because while it might not be as big of a problem when we're talking about water-based ink, it's a lot worse when it comes to oil-based ink. You still can't just put them all together into a giant stack and just hope they dry like that. If the ink is wet, the ink is gonna smudge and the ink is gonna splotch on to the other prints. So you want to hang them to dry. Then we made this wonderful clothesline rack, drying rack, where I put a bunch of tiny little binder clips on and to make the prints not skirt around on the drying rack I'm using these tiny little adorable wooden clothes pins to hold them in place and even though water-based inks should be dry within a couple of hours I still wait a couple of days well up to a couple of days anyway because usually as said I'm very busy when I make these it's really um you shouldn't do that I shouldn't do that. Please stop doing that. <clears throat> and when I've finished waiting for them to dry, it's time for the final parts. Parts. Plural. Plural. It's time to sort the prints, because not every single one is gonna come out the way you want it to. I've stopped expecting how many prints I'm gonna get out of a single printing session, and instead just let it be up to the guards, all of them. They're, they're all very interested in, in my printing processes. So when I'm sorting through the prints, it's mostly based on my immediate reaction to the print, together with a couple of specific factors. One of them is general coverage. I make a lot of prints with a lot of big black areas, and you want as complete of a coverage as possible. So while I accept a few white splotches in there, if it's too much, that's a goner. Done, no more. Then I look for the amount of peaks. I tried to get good footage of what I'm talking about here, but I really couldn't get it to show what I'm talking about. But if you put too much ink on the plate, then it creates sort of peaks when you lift the paper from the plate. I do accept a little bit of it. Again, I'm a beginner, but if it's in an excess amount, out. And then I look for overflow. So I go into the small crevices of where two edges meet and see, okay, how much 
overflow ink is in those edges. How many tiny details have I lost? And again, a few of those is not terrible, but I still want it at a minimum. The last thing is, uh, is the streaks, and I don't really mind them that much, but if it's of an excess, like in the one print that I've decided to keep for myself as my artist print, because that's basically the, th the one thing that's terrible about it, then again, out. I don't want too many of them and I don't want them to overwhelm the print. So that's a few things I look at, but then again, those are factors that can change from time to time and my tolerance for the different factors can also change depending on my mood and how many of them there are in the series of prints that I've been doing and all kinds of stuff like that. And now it's time to put the cherry on top. Editioning. The standard, as far as I've been told, is the information has to go underneath the print. It should be done in graphite. Then from left to right, we have the edition number, the title of the print, and the signature of the artist. And going through the sorting process, I ended up with five prints that I want to edition. And with that, my Father's Day prints are finished. And I'm actually quite pumped about the uh, the finished print. I think it turned out really cute. I'm really into the cartoonish arm hair. I'm really into the hair. While I dislike how high up the ear has gotten because of my little mistake, I like it being there. As said, I'm quite pumped about how this print turned out. I think it works really well with the rest of the series. And I think it works really well in the specific parts it needs to be. So I hope you agree. Tell me, do you agree? The only thing I'm a tiny bit miffed about is the proportion discrepancy between the prints. But as it is a consistent difference, I'm gonna say it's okay. It just makes me a bit miffed. It's all right. Also, humans have different proportions, so why not? So that was my entire process of making my Father's Day 2021 print. All the way from the design process to transferring the design to carving of the design and carving of the block, carving of the lino to printing, hanging to dry, and editioning them. And I hope you enjoyed the journey, and maybe even learned a tiny bit. That's gonna be it for me for this time. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye. Oh dear. Oh dear.